Success humbles the great man, astonishes the common man, and puffs up the little man. When success turns your head, you are facing failure. You never know what you can do until you try. Common sense is seeing things as they are and doing things as they should be done. Therefore, let your aim and aspiration be not to enjoy life, but to employ it. Your aspirations must not be to enjoy life, but to employ life. Our topic this morning is the imperative attitude for success. The imperative attitude for success. We talk about success, maybe in the ministry, maybe in the call of God upon your life, maybe in your secular job, you want success. How do we go about that? What kind of attitude are we supposed to maintain? As I always say, your attitude will determine your altitude. Your character is a mirror that shows your true image. Many of us have knowledge, but we don't have character. That's why we have many people who are like Samson. They have the anointing, but they have no character. They have the knowledge, the wisdom, but they have no character. And that's why they fight with everyone, and everyone fights with them. They become like Ishmaelites when they're supposed to be Israelites. When Apostle Paul was writing to the Church of Corinthians, there's something he specifically commanded him to do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 through 14, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, let all that you do be done with love. Watch. We are told to be vigilant. We are told to be observant. We are told to be sober. Even as you continue whatever God has called you to do, be it in the ministry, be it also in your circular work, you ought to be vigilant, sober. Because your enemy who wants to pull you down is going around like a roaring lion looking for a person whom he will pull down or destroy. That is why you see many people have collapsed from the ministry God gave to them. That's why many people also have collapsed from the work where they are placed. And that's why people also are moving from one job to another job. They become like rolling stone that gathers no moss. Because they are not vigilant. We are told to be steadfast. When we talk about steadfastness, we talk about being firm. We're talking about being Strong. We're talking about being also non-compromising. That's what we need as we do our work. But remember, being firm, being strong, being non-compromising does not mean slaughtering people. It does not mean killing people. It does not mean abusing people. And we are told to also be brave. Be brave to launch into things. Be brave. But not foolish. But all things must be done with love. Are you talking? Are you raising up issues or questions? Speak in love. Don't speak as if you want to show forth how much you know. But speak forth that somebody will hear and be blessed. Now, let us consider the necessary attitude that we need to possess if we will achieve success in our lives. Taking note of the lives of achievers, history makers, successful people around us or we have read about, we can see that all of them, all these history makers, high achievers, successful people, they have certain attitudes, certain attributes 
and tricks that help them to succeed. There's something they have in common. And that can help all of us also as we press on. Recognizing that your success is not just because you have multi-billion dollar business. You may have it, but still you're not successful. But when we look at the Holy Bible, the Holy Bible teaches us also how to maintain a non-negotiable attitude as we found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. If we have to succeed. That's one word I pick up there that can help us to learn and help us to move on and help us to reach our goal as the Lord leads us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look at verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We are going to pick up this word, immovable. Therefore, brethren, he says, be steadfast, immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. This word, immovable, is the word we are going to consider this morning. This word, immovable, is essentially important for those who want to please God. You ought to have character of immovability, that nothing will move you, regardless of the situation you face. They get all the circumstances around you, you will not be moved. That's why we say, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Why? Because Jesus is your Savior, because the blood is shed, because victory is already given, therefore you shall not be moved. But not saying I will not be moved when you are in your wickedness. You will surely be moved. <laughs> so we are going to look at that word. This word is... Immovable is from a Greek word. And that Greek word is ametakinetos. This ametakinetos means a lot of things. It has different meanings or several meanings. Sometimes it is used to express condition of not being easily excited, not easily shaken, or affected. There are many of us who are easily excited. And when we are easily excited, we become emotional. And when we are emotional, we do wrong thing. That's something with some people. Because of emotion, they do wrong thing. That is why, you see, many people, when they counsel opposite gender, because the opposite gender pour out their heart and say, you know how my husband neglected me and no, my wah, 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 wah. And the man become emotionally entangled with that person and something go wrong. So we talk about this particular word, immovability. We talk about somebody who is not easily shaken. Many of us are easily shaken. Just a little bit of thing, you get shaken up. Then they will tell you, oh, I cannot take it. They do what they throw in the towel. Because they are shaken. Maybe because business is not going as it's supposed to go. Then it's, I think the best is to close up the business. Remember, a quitter never wins, but a winner never quits. Or maybe in their workplace, they're having some misunderstanding with the boss or the supervisor or people around. They say, the best thing is to leave this company and go to another one. Listen, a rolling stone gathers no moss. If you leave A and go to B, let me tell you, A got a problem, B also has some problems. It just changed. The name is changed. It's a change name because in B it becomes B problem, but in A it's A problem. That's it. And many times we are so, so fixed in our mind that we cannot ask ourselves a question, what I'm doing, am I right or wrong? So we talk about this word, ametakinatos, it talks about also people who are not easily affected. Are you affected by things very easily? Just because something happened, you're easily affected. Just because somebody died in your family, it's like, oh, you cannot live anymore. Just because may your parent, your mother, your father, or your brother, somebody passed away or something, accident happened, oh, oh, oh. 
You cannot hold your head. You forget to know there are people who are looking up to you for consolence. There are people who are looking up to you for comfort. So when they see you shaking up, what will happen? It's like, well, the light, knife has been, put, has been put at the tree trunk, so the tree has to fall. Or maybe things fall apart, the center cannot hold anymore. It shouldn't be. In any action we take in life, remember there are people who look up to us. They might not tell you, but there are people who are looking up to you. We must always remember that. Secondly, this word can also describe something like unchangeable or unpredictable person, which means you choose not to change regarding what you have believed in the Lord. And no one can predict, oh, he will flip now. He's a flip-flopper. He will flip now. No, you choose to be where you are because you know whom you believe. Apostle Paul, when he was writing to Timothy, he said, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, For I am persuaded that he, God, is able to hold what I have entrusted into him against that day. That God is able, that God will not change, he will continue to keep what I have entrusted in his hands. You see, the kind of trust Apostle Paul had in God. And that's the kind of trust we need to have, which means we know our God change it not, therefore we do not change. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, he said, O house of Jacob, your God change it not, therefore you are not consumed. Hebrew writer wrote in Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8, Our God is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. He change it not. That's why we call him unchanging changer. He changes our situation, but he himself changed it not. When Jesus changed water into wine, Jesus did not become a drunkard. God's people. But that's the first step in our salvation. When we are completely changed. Thirdly, this word, Ameta Kinotos, also is used in expressing a character which is strong and unyielding. Character that will not yield to sin. Just as we know what the Bible told us in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. My son, when sinners entices you, do not consent. At your time, when you read Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 10 down to 15, you will see what it says there. It says, don't. When I tell, let's go and lay out there to kill, say no. When they tell you to do this, say no. Unyielding character. Character that refused to yield to evil. And not only that, in the book of Psalms chapter 1, from verse 1 down to 3, it said, Blessed is a man who do not sit in the council of this comfort. A person who choose not to be part of evil doing. Choose not to be part of gossip or whatever people do. That is, anything that's contrary to God's word is saying no. If there's anything troubling you, just bring it out. This is troubling me. But not to say, yala, I think so. Because you are going to destroy some feeble-minded people. That's what we're looking at. The word, Ameta Kinotos, portrays something that is rock solid, unbending, unyielding, not easily shaken or affected. That's a kind of attitude we need to have when it comes to holding on to God. You have a do or die attitude. You'll be like a bulldog when you take a, a bite to your prey, you don't let go. You hold on, no matter what. Rainfall, sunshine, I hold on to God. I will not let go. It also shows forth a person that is always constant, stable, enduring, and dependable. But the question is, are you dependable? Are we dependable? Can people depend on us and say, I know this man, I know this woman, he will not do something wrong. Are we enduring? When you are enduring, you'll be able to endure, have enduring service. Enduring. Many of us can easily just, not enough. No, I don't want, I want to go here. 
They change from here to there, from there to there. The issue is not the situation or circumstance. The issue is actually us. The box starts with you. Start with me. Yes. It is us. It's not situation, it's not circumstance. Many times we blame, point fingers. Actually, it is us. What's going on in our mind? Are we stable? When we talk about immovability, immovable, serving the Lord, are you stable? Many of us are not stable in the call of God upon our lives. We're not stable. We can give all excuses for all the mistakes we have made, and, but we are not willing to rectify them. Now I ask a question, could and would God count on us? That's a question. We are all human beings. Sometimes we feel like, I think enough is enough. I think enough is enough. But the thing is, God is look, looking at you. Can I count on you? Can I count on you? And the same thing goes to people around you. Could and would people rely on you? That's a question. Are you reliable? Not because you're going to steal money or what, but when people, there are people who just need your attention. People who want to learn more through your own grace, through grace upon your life. So they can hold on regardless of what they go through. We plan, but God disposes. Sometimes, according to your plan, things might not go that way. Are you easily discouraged? Who is an immovable believer? As we saw in that portion of scripture. So immovable, serving the Lord. Knowing fully well that your work is not in vain. When you're immovable, you must know that whatever you have done for the Lord, the Lord will surely reward you. It will not be in vain. All the secret offering you give to people with nobody knowing, the offering you give to church, the free lunch you give to somebody which nobody knows, God knows them because they are written in God's eternal book. It will not go unblessed. Now we talk about who is an immovable believer. It is a believer whose attitude can be described as solid rock. Regardless of what they go through, they hold on to God. Rock solid. Yes. Rock solid. Rock solid. I remember the last time when I went to see the cardiologist. I said, okay, can you check my heart? He said, you know, he told me, okay, I want to check your heart. So he put it in the machine. After that, he told me to get up. I said, how is it? He said, oh, rock solid. I said, wow, that's a good word. Yeah. Can God find us to be rock solid character people? Whom he can depend on in every situation. Secondly, another character of an immovable believer is totally fixed on God. That is why in the book of Isaiah 45, verse 22, it says, Look unto me, all ye inhabitants of the earth, and be saved. You fix your eyes on God. Regardless of the situation you go through, you know that your God will not fail you. Yes. Your situation might be hopeless, but God is not hopeless. Thirdly, an immovable believer is completely grounded in the word of God. You are grounded in the word of God. You know what God speaks concerning the situation you are facing. Sometimes even, you don't need to go and pray, Lord, I want to hear what you are saying to me regarding this situation. You know the word of God, the word of God already told you what it is. And you begin to work on it. You know, many times we like to hear prophecy. You know why? Because we want to hear what we want to hear, not what God wants us to hear. That will run from this place to another place to get prophecy. 
we need to hear prophecy. Sometimes you can get those fanciful prophecies, but it's not from God. The person can look at you and just want to, okay, let me tell her what she wants to hear. Your husband is next door. He's coming. He Say, praise the Lord. When? Next month. That's what I want to hear. God's people. You must be grounded in the word. Then that will help you in every situation you are. Because the word of God is a lamb on your feet. And it's a light on your path. The entrance of the word of God makes the simple wise. Thy word I've hidden in your, my heart that I will not sin against you. You're grounded. That helps you out. Fourthly, you're established. The word of God establishes you. Because you allow yourself to establish the word so you're not movable. You're not being controlled by situation or circumstance. Because you know your God lives. Established. That is why Job was able to say, I know my Redeemer lives. Because he's established in the Lord. And that's why Daniel said, those who know their God will be strong and do great exploit. Those who have relationship with God. Because knowing is relationship. Those who know their God. Do you know God really? Or you know of God? That's what Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Philippians. He said, that I may know him to the power of his resurrection. When he talks about knowing, it doesn't mean Apostle Paul never known the Lord. He had known the Lord, but he's talking about intimate relationship. That I may know him. Established. And that is why Isaiah the prophet warned us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 9. He said, if you do not believe, you will not be established. So you have to believe. To be established. King Jehoshaphat of Judah, in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 20, he said, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all you people of Judah, believe in the Lord, and you will be established. Believe in his prophets, and you will be prospering. Believe. When Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Romans, in the book of Romans, chapter, Romans chapter 10, verse 11, he said, if you believe, you will not be put to shame. Believe so that you'll be established. You'll be established. Immovable believer is deeply rooted in the word. Deeply rooted in the word. That's why in the book of Colossians, as the Apostle Paul writes to the church of Colossians, in the, church of, in, in, in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, it's written that we must be rooted in the word. Rooted. Built up in the word. So that you cannot be moved. Because when you are rooted in the word, you are actually standing on the foundation of Jesus Christ. So whatever that happens, you will not be moved. You know that your God is not a liar. You know that Jesus is not a deceiver. And the Holy Ghost will never also show you wrong revelation. God's people. That's why it's good to be deeply rooted. Today, we have many Christians who are just yo-yo. And ho-ha, ho-ha, ho-ha like that. They just follow. But the word of God, they are not deeply rooted in the word. An immovable believer is unwavering. They don't waver here and there. They are not like people who are tossed around by every wind of doctrine or tossed around by every wind. The Bible told us a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. James wrote that in the book of James. So you're an unwavering person and you don't vary. Unvarying. Many of us are very variable. We can turn to be red when we see red and green when we see green. We can't stand still and hold on and say no. I know my God. No matter what comes. We don't have that kind of strong commitment with God. Just as you saw in the life of the three Hebrew lads. In the book of Daniel chapter 3. Adenigo, Shadrach, and Misha. They told the king, O oh, king, even if our God do not save us, we will not bow down to this idol. They were unwavering 
in their faith. Daniel, the same thing in the book of Daniel, thrown into lions then, he now said, oh, oh, I better change my way. He refused, unwavering faith. And when the king came in the morning and said, oh, Daniel, the son of the most high God, has the Lord whom you worship and serve been able to save you? He said, oh, king, live forever. My God has sent his angels to shut the mouth of the lions because I was found innocent. To be frank, when I read about Hannah and I read about Daniel, I tell you, I said, Lord, help me to be humble. Daniel could have said, hopeless king, you think I'll die. You think the lion will kill me. I didn't die. No, but he said, oh, king, live forever. He wished the king. Even when people have done you wrong, can we have some sense of godliness to respond to those people with godliness? Or shall we just walk back, kick them, and give them double blow? That's not Christianity. That's not Christianity. When I remember what Daniel did, and what Hannah did, how they answered their adversaries. I mean, those who really wanted to find fault with them. Man, I tell you, my heart is blown. I said, well, this is how we're supposed to be. This is how we're supposed to be. Every one of us are looking just one loophole to what people. Oh, you see, you see what they did? Remember, when you put one finger, four, three is facing you. Stop pointing fingers. God's people, unwavering in their faith. Next, an immovable Christian or believer is securely anchored in the Lord. Securely anchored. Are you anchored in the Lord? You know how the sheep will just sail through the sea. And when they reach at a port, they'll be anchored so that they will not be tossed around, moved around by the wave of the sea. Are you anchored? Securely anchored. Securely anchored. That's why when I pray for people who are traveling, I say, Lord, grant them a secure and safe taking off, secure and safe landing. So it's secure. No matter what will happen at that moment, it's secure, which means that plane is secure. You don't need to fear anything. You can go upside down, whatever, it's secure. All we need is that security. Secure. Our faith needs to be secure and anchored in the Lord. Have you ever allowed yourself to be anchored in the Lord whereby you said, yes, I know my God. He is the source of my anchor. And I'm secure as I'm anchoring him because he's not going to let me be tossed up and down, left and right, moved according to wave of the sea. No, because I know my God. Immovable believer is stable. They're not instable, they're stable. Stable. No matter what it is. If you remember the kind of faith, Apostle Paul, it's a size when he was taken to Rome. They ship everything. He told them, don't be afraid for the angel of the Lord stood by me and said, none of us will lose our hair. He was stable. He now said, uh, as the waves go up and down, my faith also go up and down. Stable. No matter the situation, you are stable. Time of abundance, time of leanness, you are stable. When they cut your salary, when they take your bonus, they're stable. When you're in job and out of job, stable. Because you know whom you believe. And you know that he will not let you down. Never. Because those who trust in the Lord will be like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. But abides forever. Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains and hills. So the Lord surround you now forevermore. Psalms 125 verses 1 and 2. He holds you on there. Even if you believe it's undoubtedly yielded. You are totally yielded to God. No doubt you yield. Believe God. When everything seems to be going adversely against you, you believe that God will turn things around for your sake. 
God will turn things around. Just check what happened to Joseph. Joseph was complete. Every dream God had given to him, it's like everything that he, he was experiencing was going against those dreams. From his brothers who throw him into the pit. So when he went to the house of Potiphar, thinking, okay, praise the Lord, at least I'm here, I can have some nice food to eat. Satan did not allow him to rest. Satan came against him. Complete lies. Lies with false evidence. You now sometimes I look at believers. When we are accusing people, do you remember that people can produce false evidence? We don't. Or we just throw, yeah, 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 evidence is there. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw. But listen, was that woman having the dress or the shirt of Joseph? Yes, that was evidence, but it was not true. Joseph chose not to be yielding. He did not yield. From there, he was thrown to prison. Now, you are talking about greatness, success. What kind of success is this when you are from here to there, you're going all through pit to put us out to prison? It's like, well, my life is over. But God found him where he was, granted him favor, and brought him to the point where God had planned for his life. Just listen. Your destiny is not hell. Your destiny is to go to heaven. Don't allow the devil to... Your destiny is not for you to be a failure, but to be a successful person. No matter what you go through, you live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Don't think that where God has forsaken you. That's what the psalmist declared. David declared in the book of Psalm 27, in verse 9 and 10. He said very clearly, I would have lost my faith. Sorry, 13 and 14, rather. I would have lost my faith only because I believe. And because I believe, I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Not when you are dead. You will see your success while you are alive. There's something we need to learn also. As we choose to answer the call of God or choose to obey God, church, listen, no matter either in the ministry or whatever God has put you to do, be sure that there will be obstacles. There will be impediments. The devil will try to get into your way and try to destroy your efforts. Many times people think, well, if God has called me to do this, well, everything will be smooth. It's not true. It's not true. Look at other people. But you go through what we call test of time. Test of time. No matter what you do, if you bring a plant and put inside this auditorium, and leave it here for the next two years, this plant will die. And no matter how it is, look at those plants over there, over there, they are not real, they are synthetic. They can look real, but they are not real. They cannot last, they cannot grow. Because they don't go through test of time. But if you take a plant and put it outside and begin to allow it to go through test of time, sunshine, rainfall, night, moon, sun, whatever, what happens? It will begin to grow because it's going through test of time. And the same thing in your life goes. You must go through test of time. And that's why when James was writing the book of James chapter 1, he said, count it all joy, my brethren, when you go through diverse temptation. He didn't say wine and murmur. He said, count it all joy. Because what you're going through will become a blessing to somebody whom you will share your testimony with. And say, you know, I went through this, I went through this. Ah, huh, you really? You did? Yes. It became a testimony. Life without testimony is not a Christian life. This is the thing you must know. You will go through things. We must be tougher than the problem that we encounter while obeying God. We must arise and be determined to serve the Lord, regardless of the situation you go through. They'll find fault with you. People might not like the way you do things. I always say it. No two people are the same. Not even husband and wife. Not even two siblings. Not even a twin. They will never be the same. They have their own ways. The same way. If you 
uh, to work with somebody, you must know there are people who have their own way of doing things. All we need to do is to study the way they do. And if you have something to offer, be gentle, be polite, be humble to say, brother, sister, how about we try this way? But don't start, I start throwing stones. Oh, I tell you, I'm just counting my days here. I just walk off. Well, you can. It's okay. But the life or the purpose of God in your life will not be accomplished because you are a quitter. God didn't bring you for you to be a quitter. He brings you that you will be a winner. Successful. So that you can offer whatever that God has embedded in your life as talent and skill. Remember, skills and talents are not to be stored, but to be laid out for service. Devil and his host will try all they can to discourage you, tell you to stop, quit, but refuse. That is why it is good for us to have an unbending character of obedience towards God and his purpose. We must de develop and activate a rock-solid and immovable attitude in order to serve the Lord faithfully. Regardless of what you go through, don't think that, well, this is too much. It's time for me to call it a quit. We use all kinds of phrases in order to abort the plans of God concerning our lives. Do you not forget that Satan will always want to sidetrack anyone who refuses to focus on God? You must remember. Devil likes to use people's negative words to bring you down. People can use negative words to drag you down. Remember what happened? Jesus, even, let's start with Paul. Not necessarily negative, but also negative. Paul was to face, head on to Jerusalem. And here is Prophet Agabus who came and said, the owner of this shoe is going to be tied and locked up in Jerusalem. Oh, the believers said, oh, Paul, you will not go. Oh, 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 cries, emotions, everything went up. But thank God for me, like Apostle Paul. Say, so what are you doing to break my heart? I'm not only going there to be locked up, I'm going there to die. Unyielding, unbending character. He did not go to serve the Lord because he's looking forward that everything will go smoothly. No. Because when you are born again, you have engaged in the warfare. You must know it. And Satan will turn his gun onto you, on your head, every moment. But it takes your faith to kick those things out. That's why it is said, the shield of faith to bring down all fiery dots of the devil. You can also lose your focus on God by your spouse. Because you want to serve the Lord, the spouse says, so you want to sign in? You don't want to give me your attention? I go to work, I come back, I need to see you at home, you're not at home. So what do you think? Sundays, I want to go out to eat with you. You're not there. Oh, no, 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 wine and wine and wine. Satan can use your spouse also to stop you from all this week you're with him or with her. But just because you want to do something meaningful to God, devil will use your spouse to also do it. That's why the Bible told us, Jesus turned around and says, Peter, get me behind Satan. Get thee behind Satan. I always say, get me behind. Get thee behind Satan. Speak so fast. Get thee behind. This is it. Jesus did not call Peter Satan. But Jesus knew that Peter is influenced by Satan. This is it. It could be your children. Oh, my children need attention. Oh, all this week, throughout the week, you give attention just that day. You want to do something for the Lord on Sunday. Oh, uh oh. That's when hell will break loose. Then he said, You see, how to, how to? I, I tell her, I cannot, I cannot make it. I cannot make it. God didn't give you children to stop you from serving Him. God didn't give you husband or wife for you to stop serving Him. Rather, for you to be supported, encouraged to serve the Lord the more.
It could be financial problems. Oh, how to serve the Lord when I'm facing these financial problems? And many people's financial problem is endemic. Never stops. Because they don't know how to manage themselves. Church, God didn't call us to be beggars. But we must learn how to manage our resources very well. That's what we must learn. If you know how to manage your resources, you'll not be a beggar. A beggar is always a slave. Don't you feel shameful that you have to go to somebody and say, can you lend me this, can you give me this, can you give me this? What are you doing? You have your two legs and two hands. Come on! For your slaves and get into the trench and make money. And stop begging. This is something we must learn. If you don't know it, so that's how to tell, please, brother, for your slaves, jump into the trench and make money. Don't stand there and say, thinking that somebody will go there and make the money for you. Financial problem every time. Never end. Never end. Every time financial problem. To the extent they make some people feel uncomfortable. People who are supposed to see you and smile when they see you say, better avoid. You will make people to feel guilty. You are not calling the ministry or making people to be guilty. You are calling the ministry to make people to smile. Maybe situation or circumstance they will use in order to make you to lose your focus on God. It shouldn't be that way. We must have the unyielding. That is why they will use all kinds of tactics in order to push you away from your success. That's why we need to make up our mind, fix our heart to God, be rooted in the world, grounded in the word and God, unwavering in our commitment to accomplish God's given task. Let's go to the book of Colossians a moment. Chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Look at what it says in verse 6 through 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus in your and the Lord, Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. We are warned. That's what he says there. Be rooted in the word. That let no man deceive you with philosophies, which has nothing to do with Christ. We must always remember that there are people around us watching us with keen interest. Always. This is something people never learn. The way we talk, the way we behave, the way we relate to people, there are people watching us with keen interest. Therefore, we must not disappoint them. You must not. We must not. You must always consider. That is why I always say, if I make mistake today, it's not only mistake that will affect my family, it will affect many people. Because there are people who be thinking and say, uh oh, how come this didn't happen? Ah, yeah, forget about Christianity. You see, we must be careful the way we behave, the way we talk, the way we relate to people, because we can stumble a lot of people. Let us make hate news with good reasons, not bad reasons. Let it be that you are falsely accused, not because you are accused of what you have done. As you choose to answer the call of God upon your life and to obey to serve him in any capacity, always remember one thing. What is that thing? That you are responsible to what you do. But remember that. Let us be steadfast immovable in the place and ministry that God had always entrusted to us. What God had given into your hands, he needs you to be immovable, steadfast. Be honest to yourself and to the people. As we learn, one of the things that make Jacob to be prince is because he was honest. What is your name? He didn't say, mm, uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. he said Jacob. Be honest. Be sincere. Let your year be here and your name be now. Let us make the rock solid decision, even today, to totally commit ourselves to the divine assignment of God upon our lives. Make a decision. 
that I will serve the Lord, I'll be with the Lord. And I'll be a blessing to those around me in whatever I'm doing. In my words, my actions, that anything people may hear will only be a false rumor. It will not be real. And the Lord will defend you. If the word of a man is pleasing unto God, he'll make your enemies to bow. So that's the thing we learn. So that when the Lord comes, we'll not be told to depart, you workers of iniquity. But we'll say, come, you blessed people of mine. Come and enjoy the mansions I've prepared for you. There are three questions we're going to answer before we just close this morning. One, how does people see you? When you begin to do self-examination, as Apostle Paul said, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, he said, examine yourself. If you do self-examination, I tell you, you pass the test. How does people see you? Those who are work with you, do they see you as a person who is prudent, diligent, immovable, steadfast, strong, brave, or they see as strange, weird, weird though? How do they see you? Do they see you as a rock solid, stable character person? Or they see you as you are very weird? When you speak, do you, speak? you know, many of us claim that we are very diplomatic. Which means what you say is not what you mean. How can we trust you? You can be tactful, but you don't need to lie. Be straightforward in what you're doing. Be honest. Secondly, if you were to be looking for somebody to work with you, would you choose a person like yourself? That's a question. This is we need to, I ask it myself. If you're looking for somebody to work with you, will you choose somebody like you? Yourself to work for yourself. Surely some say, never, cannot. After we fight. Will you choose somebody like yourself? I always ask you this question. I ask this question to myself. If everybody in the church is like me, what kind of church are we going to have? And the same question you ask yourself. If everybody in this church is like you, what kind of church will we have? During worship, you don't like that. They won't hear any voice. So if you are looking for somebody to work with, will you choose a person like yourself to work with? Final question. This question, you have to go home with it. If you are unstable, fickle-minded in the past, would you choose to make amendment today and say, I'm not going to be fickle-minded, I'm not going to be unstable from now onwards? Three questions for you to decide what you want to do. Only you will decide. Only you. No one else will know it. God wants us to be immovable. If you want success, be immovable. Unyielding. But it takes pride to be that way. Pride that you have completely and totally committed yourself to God and let him be everything for you. God's people, remember God never speaks to condemn us. But God wants us to grow from where we are to a new level, growing from faith to faith, glory to glory, and grace to grace. That's what God wants us to be. And that's where he wants us to, the way he wants us to act. And that is what he demands of us. Remember, the word of God demands truth. And that truth demands action. Therefore, evangelism is truth demanding a verdict. So you have to choose to make that verdict concerning your life. If you would tell God today, I choose to be immovable, 
Let me not be a fickle-minded person. Anything try to shake me up. But I want to be unaffected, unemotional, real, strong, mind fixed unto you, and obedient. This is what God called us. And I pray that all of us will do the same so that we can put a smile on people's face. May the Lord bless you. When you hear God's word, do not harden your heart.